exact number of covered bridges in Pennsylvania, uh, but it's well documented. What is true about Pennsylvania is that there are more existing covered bridges in Pennsylvania than any other state in the country. People tend to think of New England as, as being a locus of uh, lots and lots of covered bridges, but it's not accurate. People think of the bridges in Madison County, which was popularized both in a book and on screen, and the truth is there are not that many covered bridges there. So Pennsylvania uh, has a, a fairly unique place in the history of covered bridges. Next bridge was constructed in 1873. There's extent documentation from the, from the county commissioners. I have a copy of, of what was originally written as the specifications for this particular bridge. It was originally called the Slifer Valley Bridge because, or the Slifer Bridge uh, in the specifications because the Slifer family lived there and the name of the road to this day is on Slifer Valley Road. However, when the bridge was actually named, it was named for one of the county commissioners, uh, John Connect. I think it's worth noting that if a bridge has survived since 1873, it means that there has been a certain amount of maintenance because uh, if you think about it, the bridges were always raised up above uh, the water level sufficiently so that in the event of a flood, the water could actually go around either side of the bridge. Uh, I can tell you that as a child, I lived near the covered bridge and in some of the major storms, uh, I would get let off the school bus and I had to wade through, probably shouldn't have done it, flowing water on either side of the bridge, but the bridge would remain intact. So the, 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 the major things that threaten covered bridges are flood, right, neglect, because it's, what is the bridge made of? It's made of wood. And the enemy to wood is rot. So if you don't maintain the roof of a covered bridge, it's going to rot. So there are cases where bridges were ill-maintained and rotted, and occasionally you, had, you could have ultimate, ultimate structural failures. The largest reason, or the most frequent reason, of loss of bridges uh, is arson. In the case of Connects Bridge, there were two cases of arson uh, early uh, in, in the past 15 years. In both cases, the perpetrators were caught. After the first incident, there was a national story in USA Today about the importance of the bridge. And then about a year later, there was another group of four young people that attempted arson. And that resulted in a neighborhood and uh, effort to try to figure out what to do to prevent arson in the future. First covered bridge was built in Italy and it was totally stone. Stone across the river. But those bridges were essentially pedestrian bridges. The town truss is, uh, it's also called lattice truss. That was uh, developed by Eiffel Town, uh, patented for him in, in 1815, um, using much lighter lumber and timber, and uh, where, wherever the, the members crossed, they pinned them, they secured them with a oak, it's called a trunnel, um, they drilled the holes and, and pinned them together so all the members were tightly joined and supported each other. They, the original patent had an upper and lower cord, they were cross pieces of timbers um, and they were pinned together. Um, Mr. Town developed a, a, uh, a second patent in uh, 1835 uh, where he added a, a lower, a, a secondary cord for each lower and, and upper cord to help strengthen the uh, bridge.
and all of our bridges, by the way, in Bucks County, all the existing bridges, uh, except one, the 13th of the bridge that we have, but 12 of them are all the, the uh, lattice type. of covered bridges is that if you're going to construct a bridge, and interestingly Pennsylvania has more bridges in general than any other state in the country, but, but a covered bridge is a cost-effective alternative to another kind of bridge. So if you go to Europe, for example, you're not going to see many covered bridges. You're going to see stone bridges for old bridges, but it's very expensive and time-consuming to build a stone bridge, and if you're if you're a, a colony or a state that's growing and you want to be cost efficient, the, the, the concept of a covered bridge works pretty well and particularly the kind of trusses and structures that were used to build covered bridges make it very easy to construct and, and put one of these things up with a minimum of effort. In America, Pennsylvania, Penn's woodland was obviously wood was was a primary construction source, and uh, people were building barns of the wood. Um, so uh, in New England, there were several wood builders that built some wooden bridges before 1800, um, but none were covered. Uh, the big problem with wood is that it gets wet and dried and rots. So the average life of a, of a wooden bridge was often only 12 to 15 years, and then it would have to be major repairs. So uh, Pennsylvania, Philadelphia was the, the principal town in the colonies, uh, even outstripped New York and Boston. Um, we're the Keystone State, and the 13 colonies, uh, Pennsylvania is the center one. Uh, so that was a lively center, and uh, Pennsylvania had no road department, even in the colonial time or when it became a state, uh, so individuals would, would build roads. Um, in 1792, uh, the, to make it easier, the state legislature authorized roads, uh, companies to, to form to build roads, and then they could charge a toll. And the, the first turnpike uh, road that those companies built, there were four companies that built the, the Lancaster Pike, and that came to the banks of the Schuylkill River opposite Philadelphia. Um, and that was finished uh, right after 1874. But uh, people moving from Philadelphia to Lancaster they started stagecoach lines with people bringing their goods from and cattle uh, from Lancaster to Philadelphia to, to be marketed there. Had to come to the banks of the river and then get on a ferry. Now, if you can imagine putting a herd of cattle on a ferry, that's a problem. And of course, the stagecoach might be delayed until uh, the ferry was available. So the uh, legislature authorized a bridge company in Philadelphia for the Philadelphia Bridge Company. They called Timothy Palmer, who was one of the bridge builders from New England. He was from uh, Newburyport, Massachusetts. Uh, he, he built the bridge, um, and in 18, uh, 1805, it was opened. But uh, Judge Palmer, uh, Judge Peters asked Palmer, what could they do to extend the life of the bridge? And he said, well, you can put a roof over it. And that's what they did. They hired a couple of carpenters and they built a, a bridge. And that was the first covered bridge in America, not only Pennsylvania, but the first uh, covered bridge built in America. And it lasted about 70 years until it burned.
you've got uh, iron and steel bridges that begin to come in, into play in the middle of the 19th century. Um, and that's why covered bridges exist. They're sort of a nice middle ground. The, the materials aren't horribly expensive. We can use metal uh, stress members, uh, protect them from the elements. Uh, the, the, the wood can be painted to resist water damage. It helps resist oxidation of the metal because you're protecting the elements of the bridge from rain. It, it, it's sort of a middle ground from an engineer's perspective. Um, what the covered bridge does is evoke a certain era of the United States from uh, right around independence to right about um, the Civil War, give or take a decade. Uh, what you're going to see emerge, uh, particularly after Andrew Carnegie uh, buys the patent to the Bessemer process is the emergence of more metal bridges, steel bridges. The Bessemer process allows for uh, relatively inexpensive but good quality steel. Um, you, you look at, at bridges today, the bridges are overwhelmingly steel girders, uh, perhaps with pre-stressed concrete, but the, the structural members are often steel. Um, the concrete may protect it from water damage, but can also trap water. If you look at any railroad bridge, it's almost invariably just open steel uh, girders, a warren truss, uh, or something similar. What the covered bridge sort of brings about is that bygone era. Uh, architecturally, it's distinctive. It is made largely from local materials. Uh, even if it has iron or, or steel structural members that are, that are native to the region, the wood is, is a ubiquitous building product. Um, it, 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 it's evocative. It, it, it brings this image of a more bucolic past before uh, America was subsumed by industrialization and urbanization. Strasburger, who we found in South Perkesee and his house was built in 1829. He came from a lot of money and he owned a mill actually where that bridge is currently, where it used to be. So the bridge was built to bring in supplies from his mill. And we're pretty sure that was the reason why it was there. It's an, it's an ethical town design bridge. It's called Town Lattice Bridge. And it's the third oldest existing bridge of that type in the country. And it was a really popular pattern they used back in that time period. I think the bridge cost approximately about $10,000 in current money back then based upon newspaper clippings about the budget from 1833 for Bucks County. And it was a really unique bridge because it was called an Ethiel Town Lattice Design Bridge. It was very popular back then, but now there are very few of those bridges that still exist. It's the third oldest type of that bridge in the country. Well, we, we don't know who actually built the bridge. They would have been master carpenters. And last year I actually worked on a project in Perkesy where we had a guy named Arnold Brayton, who was like the country's leading bridge authority, come in and look at the bridge. He said it was definitely the work of some master carpenters. We know that it was high quality work at the time. It was post and beam construction, which would have been the, the, the kind of construction they would have used. And it's also made out of uh, old, old hardwood timber, which is why it still exists, because the timber is so dense with resin. It was a very high quality product that was built to withstand a lot of traffic. The bridge is also really unique because it was one of the first bridges in the country to actually be moved. In 1958, Bucks County condemned the bridge. They wanted to put a cement bridge in there. There was a whole wave of uh, movement within government to replace a lot of the covered bridges. So the Bucks County worked with the Perkesee Historical Society 
in the town of Kirkusy to actually have the bridge moved to a safe location in Lenape Park. And what they did in 1958, August of 1958, is they put the bridge on a pair of trucks, drove it down the road, it took three or four days to actually get it over another bridge in Lenape Park. And then it took them a year to build abutments and support to actually place the bridge above ground. But one of the really neat things about this covered bridge is because it was moved in the 1950s, it's really well preserved. So you're not going to see a lot of adjustments from, from the, what the bridge looked like in 1832. They put in some support in the inside. Uh, it hasn't really been harmed, hasn't been set on fire, doesn't, doesn't have like a lot of rot and damage, stuff like that. So it's kind of like a living artifact of what a bridge would have looked like, you know, almost 200 years ago. significance, why it's important, and integrity, so you have to maintain its historic appearance. To get delisted, it has to be a pretty dramatic change, such as burning, um, and whether or not the bridges that were rebuilt are officially still on the register is a good question. I'm not sure anybody's ever had the effort or posed the effort to ask that question, because one can argue that they are no longer eligible, and therefore don't get the protections of the National Register, and that's the key thing. The National Register protects properties from any state and particularly federally funded licensed authorized undertakings. So uh, road widings, things like that, which, uh, FEMA regulations, all those things that would affect a bridge, especially a bridge that carries traffic over water, have to consider the adverse impact if it's a National Register study. In Pennsylvania, we have a parallel set of laws under the Pennsylvania Constitution so that the state of Pennsylvania and PennDOT has to also consider the adverse impact on significant historic structures. So whether or not they are delisted, the ones that were rebuilt, um, is a good question and I'm not asking them. The community's appreciation is not at all related to the National Register of Historic Places. And something that is a treasured local icon um, may or may not be listed on the National Register. It is well, I would call it a character-defining element of a community that people want to see because it evokes a spirit or a sense of place or time that they want to keep. So the fact that communities will go out and raise hundreds of thousands of dollars and spend hundreds of volunteer man hours in rebuilding these bridges once some arsonist decides to you know, destroy it is a testament to the very point that the community thinks it's important and will spend their time, energy, and money to um, make sure they stay for another generation or two or more. So each, each one has its own story and um, part of the lore of why people like them so much. Well, Moose Bridge is one of the, the last bridges that was actually built, covered bridges in Bucks County. It was built in 1874. It was petitioned by the residents of uh, Perkasy Village, actually, before it was a borough. Uh, the Hendricks brothers and other people who founded Perkins needed a second bridge in the town and it was on the Branch Road which is a really busy road and they had petitioned for it in the 1860s and there was a dispute in the county. The county was controlled by Democratic commissioners who wanted to build iron bridges and not wooden bridges but in the 1870s the Republicans got control of uh, the county commissioner's office and started rebuilding the covered bridges and I believe it was the second to last covered bridge built in Bucks County. It's an interesting history because the, the bridge was lost in a fire in 2004, it was re rebuilt by 2008. The bridge was actually owned by the state, uh, not the county, it was not really taken care of very well. In the 1930s it was almost destroyed by the, the state, but there was a last second decision to not take that bridge down. It took down another bridge called Steely's Bridge, which was down the, the road from it, literally about a quarter mile down Branch Road, and that was demolished actually instead of uh, Moody's Bridge. It had a history of being hit by motor vehicles. It was not really repaired well by the state until 
2004 when it was burned in an arson. Pine Valley is the second oldest covered bridge in Bucks County. It was built in the early 1840s, uh, only the bridge that's in Perkinsies Lenape Park is older that still exists. And that was uh, really in the middle of the field for, for a long time. There's ne never any development there until maybe the 1940s and 1950s. And that also was, was there were several arson attempts against the bridge in that time period. And the neighbors kept running out and putting the fires out on the bridge. But then in the late 1950s, when covered bridges became really popular, uh, the local residents built this little park called Covered Bridge Park next to it, and it became a very protected bridge. The bridge is fireproof, it, it has lights. I think the lights were going to be there temporarily. They seem to be not going away at the moment, and it's really kind of the pride of the community. And there's like different things in the neighborhood. It's like near Covered Bridge Road, there's Covered Bridge Apartments close to it, and it's really a, it's an example of a bridge that is really well taken care of. It's a county bridge, and they put a lot of money into making sure it's reinforced to can handle traffic. As, as our society becomes more complex, more industrial, as we develop uh, different methods of transporting goods and, and people, uh, the covered bridge is no longer useful in a sense. Um, you, you build different bridges, you build uh, more, more industrial bridges. Uh, and, and that is why covered bridges have this resonance, uh, both as, as objects of preservation and as objects of veneration. We preserve them because they're important to that era, because they evoke that era, and because they are so symbolic of that simpler, more agrarian rural past, they, they help build that memory. It, it, you know, Vermont, New England, uh, Bucks County, these are the places where you still find covered bridges. Uh, they, they tend to be off the beaten path because if there's lots of traffic, you're going to replace it with a more modern, more sturdy bridge. Uh, and so we, we embrace these bridges because of that very uh, simpler past and, and the memory it, it, it contains and evokes in us.